Hello again, this is Matt Holliday, and I'm going to continue on now with my Go class. I want to start by talking about the simplest program. So I'm going to start this by using the Go Playground. I'm not going to install Go yet. I'm just going to use this very simple environment that the Golang team provided us. I'm going to go to play.golang.org, and I'm going to make a small change. All right, we'll call this Hello World. That's the sort of the prototype original program. And I'm just going to click the Run button. And when I do that, the program actually executes and provides some output right here in the web browser. So the Playground is great for running simple programs. It has a couple of limitations. And what really is, it's all about I.O. You can't write anything, you can't read anything, you can't write anything except to the console. So you can't read or write a file, you can't open a network socket, or run a web server, or anything like that. Um, of course, part of that's for security. Now, the Playground is actually useful in another context. I'm going to go over here and talk about the Golang documentation, because that's going to be a pretty useful resource. All right, I've taken us to the Go documentation page, and what I want to do now is go to the packages. That's sort of the standard library. And we'll look down here for a second, and we'll find the Thumped package that does formatted I.O. And if we look at examples, We'll click on Examples, and I'll go find PrintLine, okay? And what we get here is a description of the PrintLine function, but it has an example that builds in the Playground. And so I can actually run that example, again, just by clicking on the Run button, and I get the output. This is editable. I can actually change this program. So we'll change it and say, Matt, and run it. And of course, that's wishful thinking. So let's make this correct for 2020. All right. And now we'll run it and we'll get, this is how I feel in 2020. Now I wanna talk for a second about this simple program that we just wrote, because I wanna explain a couple things before we go on. So first of all, every program has to have a main function, right? And that's this function right here. And what that does is it tells Go, where does the program start? And it always starts in the main function. Now, there's another trick, and that Go is a modular language. We can put the program in different files and compile it together, which is different from when I was a kid, right? When I started with, say, Pascal a long, long time ago, the program had to be in one big file, or in my case, one big stack of punch cards. But in Go, we can put different parts of the program into packages, but the main function has to be in a package main. And so we need this declaration up here that says, hey, this file is going to be part of package main. Now, in this case, it's our entire program, but there could be more. Uh, the other thing we've got to do is we need to import any package we use. So we just looked at this thumped package and print line. In order to use it, we need an import. So we import the thumped package, and then when we call it, let me erase that so it's readable. When we call it, we call print line and we put thumped in front of it. So we're calling the package dot the function name. Okay, so there's a connection, right? There's a connection between, you know, the thumped, importing thumped and using thumped. There's a connection between declaring a main function and putting it in package main. Those all sort of go together. And the only other thing to point out here is when we declare a function like the main function, there's the, the func keyword right there that we put in front of it. Okay, so that's all pretty simple. I also want to show there's another online environment that's very convenient, and it's called Replit or REPL.IT, and it has one advantage, and that is you can actually write a program that does I.O. So you can read or write files, you can actually open a socket, whatever. You can read from the console, so you can have a program that asks people to type things in. So it's a little more sophisticated than the playground environment, um, and I've used it for training. It's actually a good, a good training tool. I can link from a GitHub project into Replit with a little button so you can go to the GitHub project and push the button and run the program in Replit. Now I want to briefly mention how to install Go. I'm not going to go into details. You go to the Golang downloads page and there's instructions there. Uh, I typically use Homebrew on a Mac, so I just go brew install Go or whatever. Um, Windows, I'm going to punt because I don't do Windows. And then for Linux, you can download a gzip tar file 
and install that with sudo and it puts things in the right place. But then you still have to remember to go modify your path file so that you can execute. So if we do that and we actually have installed Go on our laptop, then we can run from the command line. I can go and create an arbitrary directory, copy my little um, main.go program with hello world in it, and then I just do go run dot, which says run what's in this directory. Now, this is enough for a simple program that uses the standard library. If we want to use third-party software, we're going to have to do a bit more work, and I'm not ready to talk about that yet. And it assumes there's just like one program in this directory. Now, the other thing about Go Run is that Go Run both compiles and runs your program. It compiles it, it sticks it in some secret place, some temp directory, runs it, and then gets rid of what's left over. So later on, I'll talk about how to actually like build a program that we wanted to deploy as a binary, either by itself or put it into a container or whatever. But for a lot of these examples, it's enough just to go and do Go Run at the command line. Okay, so that's my very brief introduction to our first Go program, Hello World, how to use it in the playground, how to use it in Replit, or how to install Go at the, and run it from the command line.